Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the X Frontier. So today we're going to be touching on Casper tokenomics. If you're new to Casper, new to the channel, and you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is actually a second video update to my original tokenomics video on the Casper tokenomics. So I actually highly encourage you guys to check that one out before jumping into this one. So let's quickly start off with three different components of the tokenomics. So first we have circulating supply which is going to include all tokens in circulation that are moving between exchanges, between peer to peer, et cetera. Anything that is not in a contract that's locked up, such as staking. Then we have max supply, which will indicate the max supply ever for a project. We'll see why Casper doesn't have one in just a second. Then there's a total supply at the current time. What is a total supply? And that is including circulating supply as well. Now, speaking of circulating supply, earlier in the month, there was an update to the methodology that Casper is using to calculate the circulating supply. This means that all coinless sell tokens unlock private validator sell tokens, tokens used for developer and ecosystem incentives, and unlock tokens held by the Casper Labs and the Casper Association will be included in the reporting circulating supply. As a result, the total number of reported circulating tokens will be approximately 10.4 billion Casper. You can actually head over to Masari and see that right here, 10.4 billion Casper. This is the price of the Casper token versus the circulating supply. There is an inverse relationship between the two and circulating supply does affect price. But looking at the all time on this chart, we can see that the Casper price has actually had actually been dropping prior to such an increase in circulating supply. And this was last year at the launch date. Um, and a lot of projects actually do this when they launch, but it's the projects that survive all this volatility that continue to build even when price is really down here like this, that in my opinion thrive. And at the end of the day, if Casper gets the volume the transactional volume through its network that I anticipate it will get. This is not financial advice. Circulating supply such as 10.4 billion is not going to mean jack shit. Yes, Casper is an 8% inflationary token, but the methodology here of no net new coins being added simply means that no new coins were minted. They were simply accounting for those that they had not previously accounted for in the circulating supply. From Casper's main network launch until now, a token had only been counted in circulating supply once it had been transferred from its Genesis wallet. The Genesis wallet is the original wallet that had all 10 billion at the start of the network. Now, this led to some curious effects. For instance, more tokens being staked to the network than reported as circulating. In just a second, we'll see what type of tokens were being held from the circulating supply. With all coinless sales tokens now distributed and most of the Casper tokens unlocked, the Casper Association has examined the methodology by which circulating supply is reported. Starting today and going forward, Casper will reflect in its circulating supply, reporting all tokens that are unlocked and transferable. Late August, it was announced that all Casper's private and public sell tokens have been unlocked from their ICOs. With all private and public sell tokens being unlocked, we see that almost 93% of all Casper tokens are in circulating supply. It is worth noting that the Casper network is not the first layer one blockchain to update its circulating supply methodology. They dropped two different links to do different protocols if you guys want to check those out. So as mentioned earlier, we're going to get into what constitutes circulating supply and what doesn't. So with this update, the following tokens are going to be reported as part of the circulating supply. That includes all coin list and validator sell tokens, since these tokens are unrestricted. Tokens that are reserved for developer and ecosystem incentives, since they too are unlocked and used for grants and developer initiatives. We also have tokens originally allocated to and held by the Casper Association. Since these tokens are unlocked and reserved for community development, we have tokens originally allocated to and held by Casper Labs. Since these tokens are too unlocked, uh, we also have that, that the remaining tokens that aren't going to be included in the circulating supply are comprised of the Casper Associations and the Casper Labs unvested team tokens 
and future team members and advisor tokens. And taking a quick look at the Casper token distribution, we see that the team and the, the advisors hold 8% and 6% respectively. So looking at the results, the change in methodology brings us close to about 10.4 billion Casper. 8.3 billion of these tokens are currently staked and bonded. That equates to about 80% of Casper's circulating supply and 74% of Casper's total supply. But I believe at the time of the recording right now, we are sitting closer to 76 point something percent being staked. They go again to emphasize this. This is very important. This will not increase or in any other way affect the total supply of tokens in the Casper ecosystem. No net new coins being added to the supply. What this does is it's going to basically allow them to report uh, just like any other blockchain. This update simply puts Casper more in line with the way in which most other leading blockchains report circulating supply. So we are sitting just under 93% of the 11.2 billion uh, total Casper that are in circulating supply. So this is a really positive thing because it decreases sell pressure on the investor side of things because you don't have the worry of a massive dump of tokens being dropped in the ecosystem with it through an unlocking of a contract or again all these ICOs. Now another positive thing as well is that 76.5% of the total supply is staked. So lots of good signs for the Casper network long term. Again, I don't really focus on circulating circulating supply too much because I have a long-term vision. And if the transactional volume on the Casper network gets to what I anticipate it might get to, it's going to be a very positive thing having such a high supply because high utility requires a high usage of the network. And remember that through every transaction, there is a bit of Casper being burned. All right, so let's revisit that infamous 8% inflation. So Casper is an inflationary token with an 8% increase each year. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned circulating supply, total supply, and I said that Casper has no max supply or a cap. And again, that is because it is an 8% inflationary token. That means that every year, the total supply is going to increase by 8%. So just a hypothetical right now, next October, we can kind of calculate what that total supply is going to be. If we are currently sitting at 11 Two three six zero six nine eight five five. Thank you for bearing with me. And we multiply that by eight percent. It's going to generate about eight hundred and ninety-eight million new tokens. We add that to our original total of eleven point two billion, and that is going to give us a total for roughly next October. How many tokens? will the total supply of Casper be? And that's gonna be about roughly 12.1 billion. So again, this is how the 8% uh, yearly inflation works for the total supply. I think many of us, and I was guilty of this as well too, we get so caught up on the numbers of like market cap and all this stuff. I think market cap has its place, um, possibly the stock market, but for such a nascent technology, a nascent asset class, such as cryptocurrency, I think that we need to really kind of step out of that box and look at value versus monetary value. And what I mean by that is that we need to really start thinking long term and think about how this new technology is going to revolutionize the world. It's going to tap into new markets, create new use cases. This is just the beginning of a new asset class. I believe we're a new paradigm shift. And so capping cryptocurrencies at, you know, a set supply, you know, this X coin can never be this much because of the circulating supply is ridiculous in my opinion, because we're at the very beginning of this new, again, era in human civilization. Because at the end of the day, you have to think about perspective. So in the 2017, 2018 bull run, Bitcoin's market cap was roughly somewhere like around 320 billion. So at that time, people thought that that was impressive, that that was it. You fast forward to 2021, 2022, where Bitcoin reached a trillion dollar market cap. So basically a 3x from that. So you can imagine 
what the future holds, not just for Bitcoin, but for different cryptocurrencies that are solving real world problems and have utility behind them and a sound team. So to kind of just tie things up, would a burn of some sort or a decrease in the inflationary 8% uh, help the Casper price? Sure. Short term, I think it would. Long term, I think it's detrimental to the network. It's too early to be able to do such a move like that. And again, a burn is up to the community. It is not up to the Casper Labs or the Casper Association. A uh, community would need to propose a burn. It would need to be approved by two thirds or more of the validators in order for it to take effect. Now, with that being said, if you're still watching, you truly are a pioneer in this space and I appreciate you for watching. Again, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that, I'm gonna leave you guys with this clip from Meta Parlikar, CTO of Casper Labs with a Casper community member, Rec Wojak, a must follow in the Casper community. This is an AMA and she's gonna be talking about Casper and the tokenomics. Have a listen. Tokenomics, max supply is really confusing. Are you planning to burn token and why not? Right, so I'll take each of these separately. So you have to think of CSPR exactly the same as ETH. Ethereum doesn't have a maximum supply either. For many, many years, right? They just implemented 1559 to start burning transaction fees. But before that, Ethereum was a fully inflationary supply and Casper is exactly the same. Um, in mainnet, the protocol will mint new tokens at a rate of 8% per year. And so by the end of 12 months, we expect the total supply to be 10.8 billion, right? 800 million new tokens will be minted as a result of inflation. And this is very much in line with other proof of stake protocols. So there isn't a max supply. Casper doesn't function like Bitcoin. It functions more like Ethereum. With respects to burning token, this mm -hmm. is really up to the community, right? If the community wants to propose a new tokenomic model, they certainly can propose a new tokenomic model to the Casper Association of the validators, and it'll be implemented. It isn't up to Casper Labs or myself, furthermore, to implement any such thing. Um, at this time, there is no plans to burn token. And the reason for that is we want there to be enough supply of token for the utility of the network by enterprises.